Hi, I was asked by somebody on Vision Punk forums to do a little tutorial on how I do my AI and this is probably helpful for other people as well. I'll show you what it does at the moment, just to show you have an idea. Okay. So, I'll, show, I'll go by the window first. Sure. I, okay. So, he will stay there. No, I'll just point it out. Variable here, player in sight. That tells me if it sees me. So I stand up at the window here. He sees me. So he's going to head. Find the, the closest path to get to me. So he'll head out and round. We're still in sight. So what if I do? If I run around here, let's hide behind the tent. Player, I'm, I'm not in sight anymore. So he'll move up. If you watch the walk animation playing at the bottom, when he stops, he'll idle. And he'll kind of just stand there gazing around, try to search for you. He turns. He might actually see me. There we go. Start heading towards me again. He'll keep doing this until you can. Right. That's what basically what it does at the moment. So to set it up, the first thing you need to do is go and set up your navigation using Nav Mesh, which is free in Unity now, which I was surprised at. I didn't even know that. So what you do is you go Window, Navigation. I'll come up here. You'll select what you want to bake, select all, it's probably easier. Go bake, set up all the variables and stuff you need. Hit bake down here, might take a couple of minutes, depending on how much stuff you have or how big your area is. Okay, and for your for the AI, what you need to do is get your either a model or just an object, attach the AI script to it, set up all these variables, you can just copy what I have if you want, or you can mess with it and do what it does. The field of view angle, that goes with the sphere collider There's a trigger, which is a very big sphere collider, which just pretty much is just how much can it see, how far can it see. And what this, the field of view angle, that is from like here and like, how, how what's its field of view, like how much can it see? 90 is about, I don't know, it might be this, I don't know, and that's where it can see me from, so if I stand behind it, it won't be able to see me, and I'm going to add the nav mesh agent to make it follow what it does, set up the speed and other stuff like that, add a capsule collider on your AI, you don't need it, I'll actually probably remove that. I don't think I need it. I don't know. Because I've got colliders in its bones for the ragdoll. Actually, no, I don't. Never mind. Okay. Um, an audio source to play. I've just got generic zombie noises here at the moment. But you get that to play whatever noise it does when it hits you. And a rigid body. You don't need this, but if you want it to interact with physics and stuff so that it doesn't walk through objects like the couch which isn't part of the navigation if I go here and show the nav mesh you see that it doesn't avoid the sofa it will just walk through it if, if it doesn't have a rigid body okay and if you have a rigid body what I suggest doing is freezing the rotations on it because if I don't do that and I shoot it it will spin around and it doesn't stop it looks pretty cool. I don't know if it's cool, it's weird. But I would just freeze them anyway. Next, I will go over the animator. Yeah, I'll do that. So, it's a very simple one. It's got walk animation, attack animation, and an idle. It's got three parameters. Idle, which is a bull. Attack, which is a bull. And it's speed, which is a float. It will always be an idle. Well, its default is idle. To go to walk, it must... Attack must be false from idle, but we don't need that. But speed must be greater than 0 0.5. And to go back, 
speed needs to be less, idle needs to be true. And to go to attack from idle, attack needs to be true. And to go back, attack has to be false and idle has to be true. If you're walking and you get to attack, attack has to be true to go to it. And when we're going back, attack has to be false and speed has to be greater than 0 0.5, just to make sure it doesn't go to walk instead of idle. You can, I'll quickly just go through all these and you can pause to see what they are set to. Next we'll jump into the script, the AI script. Here I have all the variables set up. This one you don't need to worry about at the moment, it's still a work in progress. It's to make it walk to random points, so it's not just standing and waiting for you. Um, so it's transform as player T, that's just the position of the player. Game object player, that is to find where the player is. And that gets passed into player T to get its transforms. Timer is just how fast it can attack. Two waypoints, that's another one you can miss out on. It's range, that's how far away you have to be to attack. I'll just come that as well. Um, audio clip hit noise, that's just the noise it makes when you hit it. Animator, animator, that's just declaring the animator so we can get it later. So the bull player in sight is player in sight. Field of view, field of view, as I said before. And I to see the last player sighting is where the player was last. So it will always go to where you were last to try and find you. And sphere collider is a sphere collider I showed you earlier, which is that big one. And previous position, I've already said that, I think. Yeah, previous, I don't know, can't remember. Uh, public float, current speed, that's how fast it's currently going, so we can get the idle animation going later. Okay, so on trigger stay, so that's the big sphere collider. So if the player is inside of here, it will get its direction, it will also get the angle like the field of view angle and then it will rake, if all these are set and true and stuff it will raycast out and if it hits the player the player inside equals true, just to tell another script if where if it sees the player when we exit, the player inside equals true and last player sighting, that's the one up there um, it will go down to find closest player so this pretty much just goes through all the players that are currently here and it will tell which one's closer and which one's best to go to. And also return where it last was and stuff. So in start we're just getting the animator. In update we're setting the timer for attacking. And here we are. If So if the player is sighted, player equals find closest player. So we're getting where the closest player is. And then player t equals player dot transform. We're just getting the transforms of where the closest player was. And then we're using our nav mesh component to set the destination of our AI to the player's position. And this part down here, um, let me just comment this back. Um, pretty much what we're doing here is we're getting its current speed with these these three top ones here, we're getting what its current speed is. Uh, distance is how far away we are from the player and so if distance is less than range, which is the attack range, we'll go to attack, which is down here. We can do pretty much any attack, so I'm using uh, UFBS at the moment, so I use their attacking code. It's just one line thing, it's quite nice. And we also play our noise. And up here again, so if it's not in range, what we're also doing here is when we go to attack, it also sets the bull attack in here, so it plays the attack animation. And if not, attack equals false, and we're setting is speed equals current speed, so it knows whether to go to idle or walk again. And then down here we're just doing a double check to say if the current speed is less, we'll go to idle. That just stops it messing up and staying in the walking animation when stopped. So that is pretty much it. Uh, the base code was done by Bored Doctor, I think that's right, and on the Vision Punk forums he started with a simple one, I expanded on it, with help from Wesley, Wesley WH, he helped me from Uni Answers, and thank you, and I will update it later with, with it making, 
So if you try and sneak up behind it and you make a noise, it might turn around and head towards you. 